Okay, uh, we're moving on then, and to the film that kind of, I suppose, brought him back into my mind. I hadn't thought about him for a while um, after seeing Cachet, but his second Palme d'Or winner, Scott Amour. Yeah, uh, 2012's Amour is Hanukkah's most critically regarded work all the way up to the Oscars, and in a lot of ways feels like Hanukkah's direct response to critics of his usual working style, like what I've been doing in this podcast. It's <laughs> certainly his most intimate and involving work. Um, it's set in Paris, where Jean-Louis Chaudinot's uh, Georges Laurent, he's a lot of Georges um, uh, in his work, isn't he? And Emmanuel Rivas, Anne Laurent, and a lot of Anne's in his work, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Yes, uh, I may have a point yes. to make about that later, Scott. We'll, yes. we'll, we'll come to that. Yes, uh, so they, they play happily married, retired octogenarian piano teachers whose lives become a lot more complicated when Anne undergoes a stroke. One botched artery surgery later, she's left paralysed on her right side and stuck in a wheelchair, but wants to remain in their home, not a hospital or a care home. Georges promises this and sets about the task of being a full-time carer. And without minimising the events of the film, narratively speaking, that setup will tell you most of what you need to know, uh, with life becoming more stressful and less enjoyable for both Anne and George's first by slivers, already enough to drive and to contemplate suicide, and then by jumps as Anne suffers a second stroke and is left with severe dementia. It's a powerful look at love and responsibility, up to including George's final duty or act of love or crime, depending on how you view these things, and I'm not here to interpret that for you. Uh, but given the subject matter, it's not a film I can say I enjoyed, but it's a film that I, and I'm sure you, will appreciate for its many moments of warmth and of tragedy and of heartbreak, uh, but all tempered with a contemplation of what it means to have shared a lifetime with someone. I feel I should have a lot more to say about this, but I don't really. Um, again, the Hanukkah table stakes of it looking greater there, although I suppose even by his standards, he's got an incredible performance. He's from the cast, of course, Trishino and uh, Riva Prime amongst them. It's a hell of a film, and it's a claim as well earned. Uh, there's none of Hanukkah's films that aren't in some way challenging, uh, mostly, I find, in a sense, of actually connecting with the characters and the events of this film, and it's interesting, then, to find this challenging for the exact opposite reason. Uh, great filmmaking, but not of the type that will leave you on a high note. No, um, but I thought this was superb. This was my mm -hmm. favourite of these six films. Yeah. Uh, not necessarily by much, although it's it's such a different film to Cachet, you, you know, it's hard to compare um, and futile, really. But yeah, I just thought this was amazing. Um, again, this is a film made with a particular actor in mind. In this mm -hmm. case, it was um, Jean-Louis Trantignon, mm -hmm. who he'd been wanting to work with for quite some time. He's amazing in this. Yeah, yeah. What a performance! And because he's he's doing so much of the film on his own, mm -hmm. because obviously uh, Emmanuel Riva is of playing kind of unconscious us or you know ill at times, so she's not yeah. she's not doing a lot. And I, I don't want to diminish her role, but um, and we've talked about it a number of times over the years, Scott, that you know. People get awards, you know, playing someone who's mentally ill or in some way, you know, disabled or handicapped or something. Mm. And that can be difficult, certainly, but it's, I don't think it's actually as difficult as the people having to deal with that, playing yeah. the person dealing with that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, she's good, but Jean-Louis Trantin, you know, he's, he's just superb. He carries that film. Um, such a wonderfully expressive face. Mm. Um, and... While a lot of the themes in here are the same as in other films, and you know, it's not always an easy tie up because, like, what happens to George at the end? He's, I mean, my guess is that he has just wandered off somewhere because he sort of dreams his wife and he leaves the flat, but you never see him again. Like, and he's not yeah. there when the body's found. Like, oh, okay, that's interesting. That's left a, a bit of a um, curiosity in my mind there. Um, but it's not the specific point of the film. It's just beautiful and touching, and it feels real. Mm. And I, I particularly enjoyed the the way he um, talks to Isabel Luper, who plays their daughter, um, when she comes later. It's like, you know, do you think I'm an idiot? Do you think I haven't had a second opinion and stuff? You know, yeah. <laughs> um, I kind of like that. It's kind of entirely legitimate spikiness he had. Yeah, I very much enjoyed the writing and the acting of that. Um, I will say. Um, knowing what this film is about, that I was incredibly apprehensive about watching this film. Um, yeah, because my mum is currently suffering from advanced dementia, which <laughs> sucks. Mm. Sorry, which really bites. Um, <laughs> I'll leave a clean version in for you. But uh, 
so much, you know, I wasn't particularly keen on watching a yeah, film that was going yeah. to bring that up, but I mean, everybody's different. Um, everybody suffers from these things differently, but there were some things I recognised in there. Yeah. Both in terms of the condition and the stress that the caregiver gave, um, was receiving. Mm. Uh, but I just thought it was beautifully done and really touching. And, and I appreciated that, I mean, it didn't necessarily go into particularly yucky stuff, um, which is something that comes with both dementia and strokes. Mm. This poor woman had both. It doesn't really shy away from it too. Like some of the like, you know, bodily functions and stuff, yeah. um, which films like this tend not to do. And it's something that has always bothered me and bothers me knowing more now, knowing much more about the reality of it. And you'll occasionally get a very unexpected film that will kind of cover that stuff. Um, of all films, do you remember from, oh, it had been, I guess maybe about nine years ago, something like that, a film with Robert Downey Jr. and... Yeah, The Judge, yeah. Um, yeah the Judge, exactly, yeah, Robert Downey Jr. and Robert Duvall, mm -hmm. which was, it was kind of like one of those Lifetime or Hallmark movies that somehow had got an A-less cast. Yeah. <laughs> but it actually touched on this stuff, and there's, there's one point where Robert Duvall is, loses his... Um, control of his bowels in the the bathroom and it's horrible but it's sort of thing that happens and it just it immediately gave it that that feeling of authenticity yeah whereas there's another film that um, I put about again and you said exactly the same thing that I'm about to say um, at the time I think we both did it's a film from I think it's about 2004 I haven't looked it up I, I don't remember exactly but something like that with Julie Christie and Terrence Stamp called Away From Her Yes. Yeah. And it was one of those things that it got so much praise at the time or, and Julie Christie's so good, she's so some of the dimensions. Like, yeah, basically the entire film was she forgot somebody's names a bit. Yeah. <laughs> that that was it. It was like it was nothing like the actual real stuff. It was like, yeah, she couldn't remember some stuff. Um and it got so much praise and it's actually like, pretty crap. Yeah. <laughs> um whereas this, this does not shy away from that. It, it it's so real. And it's so much more affecting for it too. I just thought it's a, a fantastic film. Um, again, I'd be happy to watch it. No, it's it's very very rewarding. Um, but a lot of people have had um, experience with different family members with dementia or strokes or stuff. So I mean, there's a good chance for a lot of people it's going to make them think, particularly of someone. But it's handled handled so sensitively and so realistically. Yeah. In terms of the way people people respond, that it's. I, I wouldn't let that put you off. I mean, it, it's a well-named film too, because it's clear, it's about love mm -hmm. um, and companionship and stuff too. It's um, for all that it should be bleak. It's actually, I think, of the films I've seen, quite by far his most uplifting film. Yeah, which is not to say it is uplifting. <laughs> um, we're on a, a sliding <laughs> scale here, yeah. but yeah, uh, but it really is. Um, Again, in, in other films have covered this quite well. There's a, a Mexican film called Las Buenas Herbas, or The Good Herbs, which covers something very sim similar. In that case, it's a mother and daughter, uh, although it ends in almost exactly the same way, hmm. with the same mechanism. But you do get films that come along and cover this, and they do it sensitively. Um, I think the big surprise is there was a Mikael Haneke film that was another one of the few that did it so well. Yeah, yeah, that's... Uh... It never feels exploitative, which uh, it could quite no. easily have been, um, particularly given what was happening in it. And um, yeah, it, it's the only Hanukkah film on this list, certainly, that, that does not try and keep you at arm's length. It, it will no, pull you no, directly no. into it. And it, it's, it, it is much stronger for it. Um, this way you actually get a hold of what the ideas he's trying to explore are. And because it's explored through the characters who you can identify with and you can recognise bits of your own experiences in your own life and your own relationships on and it makes it a better film. So, you know, there is perhaps a reason for doing it, Michael, just saying. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, no, um, it, it is terrific. It is probably the best of the films that we're talking about. I would agree with that. It's, as I say, because of aforementioned uh, uh, paragraph there, it is the least, it's the least Hanukkah kind of film on the list. Probably makes it the best, but if you're looking for the kind of more Hanukkah experience, that's why I kind of say that Cache is perhaps a bit uh, a bit more representative of his work. Um, this perhaps isn't, but it is also the best of his work, so yeah. it should definitely yeah. be on the list of things to watch if you've not done it already. Yeah. Um, 
I think it would be quite easy to say, um, and because this came up, again, in this interview, um, if you can get a hold of it, it's very possible on YouTube. It's really, really interesting. It was an interesting Hanukkah's work at all. Um, he comes across really personable. Mm-hmm. Um, he's really a rather an engaging talker. But someone comes up, there's a Q&A at the end, and a woman asks, you know, basically, what was your childhood like? And because he's saying, he basically goes, ah, uh-uh, you don't get over that easily because people, when people see a film that are they are, they're shocked by. Mm. Um, she may have mentioned funny games in particular, I don't recall now. Um, but, you know, if people say, there's a film that you're shocked by that, you know, like, it makes you feel better to know, oh, like the the director, basically, or the writers messed up. They had a terrible childhood or something. Mm-hmm. It's like, I'm sorry to disappoint. I had a really, really happy childhood. I was really privileged, um, you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> I had my, my mother and my aunt and my grandmother all doted on me. So you, you don't get away with it easily. Um, but it, you could sort of feel that um, from his other... F- I had a point in here somewhere. I'll get to it. Uh, <laughs> you could feel that perhaps some of his other films suggest that maybe like, he's got troubles or something. Um the, there's a way he seems to view the world but yeah. no and i think maybe this is the the first time on film that i've seen that it's like you, you suggest that you know you know there's something more there he's not this incredible cynic all of the time yes <laughs> yeah um there's also just a, a particular way of looking at the world that that interests him that captivates him but he can do other things too as yeah. this film shows <laughs> i hope that works up to a point um <laughs> I should have really fitted that anecdote in earlier, but but I forgot, so sorry. <laughs> Just say the last sentence strongly and confidently. That'll do. 